All right. Hi guys, Liz here. Uh, I have made some hard decisions and my paint order has arrived. So I've decided what I'm going to add to the new Daniel Smith set. And today I will show you how I fill the half pans and I'll show you the colors I chose. Uh, this is the tin. As you, oh, there's my number four. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, it comes with 12 empty half pans um, that are securely snuggled in there. I'm going to show you how I take those out too. Let me just move that brush out of the way. There we go. You don't have to take the empties out to fill your half pan, but I will show you how you can do that in case that's something you are interested in. So you can kind of wiggle these little prongs a little bit. They do flex, you don't want to overly bend them. But then they pop out nice and easy. And then before I stick them back in, I like to pinch that forward a little bit. And I set the pan in on an angle and then it just locks into place. Uh, some things you might find useful for filling your half pans or leveling things out are a few palette knives. And I have these two shapes that I use a lot. I also use this one to remove uh, sheets of paper that are mounted on a block. You can just run it along the side to remove it. Um, but these are both handy for um, tapping paint in, making sure there's no air bubbles, and cleaning up the edges if you want them to look really nice. Maybe, maybe that doesn't matter, <laughs> but they exist and you should know. Um, so yes, I previously squirted out a bunch of colors, which you may have seen some sketches that I've done with since then, but um, made some decisions. I try to choose colors that I don't have in palettes already, but I did choose a few favorites um, that I regularly use, that I regularly mix with, um, and then a couple that I obviously don't have in palettes yet. Uh, so we will see how they re-wet. In my experience, uh, all Daniel Smith paint has re-wet really well after it's been squeezed out of the tube and then dried. And then two other brands that re-wet if you're not sticking to one brand. Uh, Holbein re-wets really well, and so does Core, which is manufactured by Golden Paints. Um, so really, the world of color is uh, yours if you wanna just choose multiple brands. But um, I am going to go with all Daniel Smith pigments today uh, because I thought it'd be nice to have a set that was brand cohesive. Um, so yeah, uh, my first one is Buff Titanium. And this is a really um, soft kind of ochre beige. Uh, it's a, not a blinding white, it's a warm white. Uh, very useful. I do a lot of animals and nature and that kind of thing. Um, so you can see it's nice and warm. I'm going to leave my pans, I think, in the set while I squirt the color out. Um, you might want to test, uh, give it a little squeeze. There is some gum arabic there. That's not going to hurt anything. You can either mix that back in or blot that out on a paper towel. All right, that looks good to go. I've just squeezed the tiniest amount onto a paper towel. So I still feel like I have ample. So usually I'll try to fill a pan between a quarter and a half. Uh, the amount of the pan, I will fill them up to the top and I'll let that dry. Um, so I just I'm gonna squirt that in there and I just kind of squirt until there's an even layer at the bottom. There we go. Let me just put that back 
on there. I'll wait for this to dry before I go and add the second layer. Should have grabbed some clean paper towels. That's all right. Okay, so then if I wanted to, um, I can kind of mix this in a little bit more. And I just like to tap it into the corners, but I'm pretty uh, obsessive about it. <laughs> like I said, you can do this your own way. I don't know. I try to make them look as nice as possible. Don't worry about that little drip. So that will level out and it looks good already. Now I might not necessarily wait till it's like completely set up. I might go back after I finish the 12th color in my add additions. Uh, so we'll see, I'll just see how, how uh, tacky it is at that point. This is Aussie Red Gold. And this is kind of the best of <laughs> uh, the best of Indian yellow and the best of transparent pyr pyrrole orange mixed together. This really, really glows. All right, so that guy looks good. Here, I'll show you that. So that's it in its solid form, but when you paint with this guy, it's very luminous. And to me, this was different enough than the Quinn Gold. There's a lot more kind of red in it, but that will be very nice and punchy. Then again, I'm just gonna try and put the uh, cap end of the tube into the well. There is a little bit of Arabic. I'm just going to blot my little, there we go. Got my color now. Not too worried about that. And just a little squeeze and then I'll level that out. There we go. That will be ready for the second layer. Oh, here's some paper towel. Okay. All right. So I think for time's sake, I will tell you the colors I chose, and then I will time lapse filling this first layer for the rest of the set. Um, my next color will be quinacridone coral, and uh, this is very lovely. It's kind of like a quieter magenta with a little, but a little pinkier. Uh, also, you get beautiful purples and mixes with that. Um, organic vermilion. This is gorgeous. This is kind of like a hot red uh, with just enough orange in it. Uh, I think I will go in this border. Yep. So this is cobalt blue violet and this is one of my probably go-to blues actually. And it, yeah, it does lean towards the purple side but this is very um, beautiful, it's very clean, it's kind of that has that vibrancy you want. Um, try that out, it's gorgeous, you won't be sad. Okay, hang on, some Aussie red gold tried to get on me. 
the nerve. Okay, so the next one, this is Cerulean Blue, and I just don't have this in a lot of palettes, so I have it in my tube, and I'm worried that it's getting old, so I'm going to uh, add that to this set. And Cerulean is pretty translucent, it granulates, um, but it's a clean blue, and I thought this would pair well with the darker blues that already come with the set, which are Ultramarine and Thalo Blue Green Shade. Uh, the next is Cobalt Teal Blue, and if you guys know me, you know I love turquoise, and I have turquoise in all my palettes. My kitchen is turquoise. There's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> but um, I actually have never bought this color, which is one of their very popular colors. And so I thought I'd purchase this and then add it to the palette. Um, I have similar colors from other brands, but yeah, I'm excited to start working with that one. Uh, this is, I believe, the only Primatech color I'm going to add. Uh, this is Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, and this is one of their fancier ones. This is my second tube of it. I love this color. Um, it's very smoky and beautiful and subtle, but it's turquoise, so you can't really go wrong with that. Um, happy to have that back. This next one is the Cascade Green, and I think I mentioned that during the grid exercise. This one is really neat, um, as you can see, I hope. <laughs> uh, it kind of goes down this really lovely, uh, I believe it's a phthalo green they're using, but then you get all this dark green speckle. So I will see how this looks when this re-wets also. Um, we will find out. All right. Okay, the next one after that, I'm gonna do this burgundy yellow ochre. And this is a really nice warm yellow ochre. I really like this as a mixer um, for portraits, for landscapes. It's just kind of those good, one of those good uh, universal colors. It's not as flat as a regular yellow ochre that you might have already. Uh, this one is <laughs> funny. This is just good old burnt umber, but I love this color, uh, and Daniel Smith's is gorgeous. Uh, it's just that beautiful, lovely, warm, earthy brown without being chalky, so that's nice. Uh, my last color will be neutral tint, and I wanted something to mix darks with. I use Payne's Gray a lot. I'm one of those watercolor people that has black in some of their palettes. Um, but this is actually, of the neutral tints between brands, I feel like this one is actually very neutral. Some lean really blue or purple, and this is kind of right in the middle there. This beautiful, nice velvety gray. All right, so I'm gonna uh, continue filling my pans, and I will get back to you when I do the second layer.
All right. It is the next day after we started filling the pans. And this is how they've set up. And I'm pretty much gonna do exactly what I did yesterday, but fill them as close to the top as I can. And then I'll use my palette knives here to just even it out. You don't have to do that part. I just like to <clears throat> have it look a certain way. <laughs> Just kind of putting that in there. Right. This is a fresh tube of this color I just got. And some tubes are older, so they're a little stiffer. The paint is. that leveled out very well on its own. There are some cracks there, but when I um, add this next layer, the paint will fill in all those cracks. You don't have to smooth it out again. This is just my preference. Sometimes, sometimes I don't have this preference. It just depends. Then there. I definitely need a sip of this coffee because I'm talking and I haven't had anything to drink this morning. Hang on one sec. <laughs> work. <clears throat> this is the Quinacridone Coral. There you go. That one leveled out nicely on its own as well. I'll probably just even it up. Mm 
All right, so I hope you kind of get what I'm doing there. Um, I am going to fill the rest of these in and then I will come back and show you what they look like once they've all set up. Okay, <clears throat> the empty half pans are filled. I hope you liked some of the color suggestions. This should set up, they'll still level a little bit on their own and as I paint with them, they'll smooth out even more. And the best part is as they become empty, I can refill them with tubed color. I'm just gonna go over the lineup one more time of what I chose and these are just colors that some I had, um, or I just loved immediately when they came out, um, or, or ones I've used for a long time, and a couple standards. Uh, buff Titanium, Aussie Red Gold, Quinacridone Coral, 
don't know if we're gonna fit on there. Okay, organic vermilion, cobalt blue violet. You may have seen this guy was a little tacky in the second application. Uh, it's just an older tube, and so that's also a good thing to do once your paints are aging a little bit. Squeeze them into a pan, and you know you can use them instead of uh, having to cut a tube open at another time to use them. Uh, cerulean blue, cobalt teal blue, Sleeping Beauty turquoise genuine, Cascade green, Burgundy yellow ochre, Burnt Umber, and Neutral Tint. So those complete the Add Your Own Row uh, for me. You also may have noticed that if I had extra paint on my palette knife, I would add it to my test swatches from when I was auditioning colors <laughs> for this set. Um, I'll still paint off of this page or I'll leave it around and it will find its way into a sketchbook or a collage or another project. Um, but you don't have to waste that paint if you get a little uh, extra on your tools as you're filling your pans. Um, but here you go and I can't wait to paint with this. I was already excited before <laughs> and now we have some uh, nice punchy additions so this should be a good time. Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. Till next time.